Okay, this one should be a brief video. This is the Oligopoly wrap-up. Um, in the main table that I gave you uh, early on at Perfect Competition to organize your thoughts uh, through this section, and there's always a section that says relevant graphs. This is the one place where technically um, there are no graphs. Right here we use a different tool, and that's game theory. You know, so we use, we said, learn a little bit about the prisoner's dilemma and using that two by two matrix, right, to think about um, two players, you know, with multiple strategies. And uh, we use game theory as a tool. Why? Because of the interdependence. That is, the best decision for one uh, player or one party depends heavily on what the other players are doing. So, because of interdependence, right? So, we'll say because of interdependence. We use game theory. Uh, we think about simultaneous games, um, and that's what helps us, you know, sort of evaluate or uh, think about the incentives in oligopoly. The other um, important sort of uh, things to wrap up here: profits in the long run. You no know, economic profits. We could even be more specific here. More specific. Economic profit in the long run. It is possible hmm? if. A, a small number of uh, producers can act collectively if they can act, um, you know, in, in, in if they can act more like a monopolist, then it is at least possible. It's certainly not guaranteed, um, but it is possible. Uh, but we could also make a note here. However, um, in many cases, competitive... pressure emerges even with few, um, you know, with few players or sellers, right, or competitors. So even in the, in the instance where there's a small number of sellers, right, so in the oligopolistic uh, market structure, there is uh, competitive pressure towards lowering of prices and, and more widespread availability. However, if, you, if they can figure out how to collectively uh, keep their prices higher and restrict output, um, economic profits are at least uh, possible or feasible. Um, I think we aren't going to get too much, uh, go very far down this road, but um, antitrust laws, right? Um, they're intended to protect consumers from market power or monopoly power. All right, so antitrust laws are designed to try to make it uh, less likely or more difficult for a small number of firms to collude and act as one large monopolist rather than as individual competitive um, uh, players. In terms of efficiency, do we achieve um, allocative efficiency or productive efficiency? Um, you've probably figured this out by now, right? Since the only place we achieve them is in perfect competition, then in oligopoly, we would expect not to have that. And then takeaways, I think I've already covered, right? Um, if the players can act as one, uh, you know, with market power, can act as a monopolist, then maybe they can raise the price and, uh, you know, restrict competition. It turns out, though, in mo many cases, those enforcement mechanisms are challenging and there's competitive pressure towards undercutting, right, and, and trying to take, uh, take more business. Furthermore, just like we talked about in Monopoly, those barriers to entry are not forever, right? Uh, to, there will always be people, you know, and companies and, and people with ideas, entrepreneurs looking for ways over, around, or through those barriers to entry. So through technology, through new methods, through the expiration of a patent, whatever it is, um, competition will always be, in a sense, sort of chomping at the gate, uh, looking for a way to come in and eat away at that uh, monopoly profit. So that's Oligopoly. If you have questions, don't hesitate to follow up. Um, Otherwise, I uh, look forward to uh, our next time together.